When I was 12 years old, my dad passed away after a lifetime of neglecting his health. So from a young age, I vowed to take care of myself physically. I wasn't going to let that same fate happen to me. You know, I dedicated my life to fitness, becoming a personal trainer. My slogan was, don't be a prisoner of your genetics. I completed eight full distance Ironman races, became a national spokesperson for a sports nutrition company and was featured in magazines and newspapers around the world. But as much as I dedicated my life to physical well-being, I was neglecting my mental and emotional well-being. See, my father wasn't just physically ill, he also suffered from severe mental illness. And no matter how many finish lines I crossed or mountains I climbed, I always felt like it wasn't enough. Like I wasn't enough. Nothing I did ever filled that void or answered my search for meaning. On July 1st, 2020, the purpose and direction of my life would change forever. I spent five hours in a hospital room holding my best friend's hand until he passed away. It wasn't COVID that took my friend's life. He essentially drank himself to death. I knew at that moment, my life's purpose was to help other people find meaning and fulfillment in their lives, to not suffer that same fate. My power is in my perspective. Who would you be if you had nothing to complain about? Usually I get, I would be dead. Everyone has their own perspective based on what's happened to them in their life. And that's how anything is when we look at it. Facts usually do not create strong emotion. Emotions come from judgment of a fact. And by the way, you're, not, you're never stuck in traffic. You are traffic. You're part of the problem, yet we're so angry that everyone else is on the road. <laughs> it's your road. Everyone's slower than you an idiot. Everyone faster than a maniac. Even if you're speeding, this is the right speed for everyone to go. You know, I'm able to connect with my audience because I've been there. I've felt burned out. I've had heartache. I've experienced profound loss and feelings of never being satisfied, of never being enough. I was always chasing the rabbit and never slowing down to enjoy and experience life in this moment. I love interacting with my audience using stories from my own life. Everything from having to drop out of an Ironman race from a tire that exploded to completing a 10 day silent meditation course. So I was at a wedding like seven years ago and the bride went to cut the cake, but the venue didn't lock the legs of the table out all the way. Yeah, you see where this is going. The table falls to the floor. This five tier cake goes all over the floor. 300 guests all freeze. What do you think the bride did? Cry, okay. Blame the husband. Blame the husband. <laughs> she started laughing. Everyone in the room started laughing and it became a memorable part of the wedding. That could have gone, as you said, a very different way. Either way, there's cake on the floor. So it's a matter of perspective. How do you view what's going on? His presentation style was engaging. I enjoyed listening. It kept me interested the entire time. <laughs> You know, I, I talk about how do we respond instead of react? How do you be present just in this moment? And I provide the tools to help people view things in a more empowering light. One of the things I got from the presentation was the concept of monkey brain and always, <laughs> always one thing, one thing, one thing. Um, and just taking that time and setting aside the time to be mindful, be present, be quiet. <laughs> I would definitely recommend Ramsey to be at a future event. I learned so much and I think it really benefited the whole team. Your attitude is going to affect your day-to-day -day life so much more than your aptitude. It doesn't matter what you know, it matters the energy with which you show up. To learn more about what I can do for you and your organization, visit my website, bergeronwellbeing.com or give me a call, 480-747-0633.